every wrong step could bring disaster as our players attempt to cross this bridge and win a prize package worth over $5,000. So watch now as they brave the dangers to win a fortune on Pitfall. Hang on, Dan, you're standing on a pitfall. Grab those handlebars, Vivian, that's another pitfall. Now, here comes the man to guide you through all the pitfalls, Alex Quebec. All right, John Barton, thank you very much, and my thanks also to all these wonderful people who came to our studio today to share in the fun of Pitfall. I've got some silly questions here that I'm going to be asking in the next half hour. They're going to come up with some good answers, and that provides the framework for our contestants to win points, win a match, and go on to pick up some fabulous prizes. Let's go down to the floor right now and meet the players up close. Well, here, first of all, is Dan's challenger, and she could be a tough one today. She's a homemaker, rides a dirt bike in her spare time, and has been known to skin the occasional bar. She's Vivian Welters. Now meet our champion, who's building his own fortune right here on Pitfall. He's already won over $10,000 in cash and prizes. Dan Wanamaker. 10,917 to be exact, so it's a pleasure to welcome Dan Ooh. Wanamaker back to the program, and it's a delight having you join us. You're familiar with the rules, aren't you? Mm -hmm. I ask the questions, they give me the answers, you score points every time you figure out what their top response was. The points will appear on the scoreboard behind you, you'll earn pit passes along the way, we'll play a five-point or five-minute game, whichever comes first. Ready? You've got pretty blue eyes. And so do you, Vivian. <laughs> oh, sorry, Dan. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this first question is a tricky one, so be careful. On a first date, what part of the girl will most men touch first? Here's your choice. Number one, the hand. Number two, the waist. Number three, the shoulder. Number four, the lips. Go ahead and vote on that right now. Pick one of those four. And Dan, as champion, you get to comment first, so do it. What part of the Conservative girl... Conservative looking group up there. I think I'll go with the hand, number one. All right, yeah, that would make sense, wouldn't it? You shake hands yeah, right. on the first date. Vivian, they might be thinking differently, however. Yeah. Let's hope they want to get a little cozier and put the arm around the shoulder. Around the shoulder, so you're going to go for number three. Three. Let's find out if this audience is as conservative as our champion thinks. What did they say? They went for the hand, and that's what Dan selected, so he is absolutely right here in the first point of the match. From time to time, each one of us will receive a compliment, and that, of course, makes us feel very good. But what do you like to be complimented on the most? Is it your looks, your intelligence, your figure, or your personality? Select one now. The one you like to be complimented on the most. Vivian, look at the crowd again. What do they to... want to be complimented on? Oh, they all look like they have great personality, so I'll say personality, aren't number four. Di aren't you diplomatic? <laughs> Dan. I think there's a lot of ladies in that crowd that would like to be complimented on their figures. Alec? Figures. I think I'd have gone for looks, but let's see. What did the audience come up with? They said personality. A friendly group. Nice people. With lousy figures and <coughs> terrible looks, but great personality. Seafood. That's very popular in this part of the country, but right now I want you to look at seafood, ladies and gentlemen, from a completely different point of view. I want you to tell me what you consider to be the most sensual seafood. Oysters, clams, mussels, or scallops. Sensual seafood. Vote on that. Dan. Boy, I think I'm going to go with oysters. Oysters. All right. That's the... I like myth. that number one, I think. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. Vivian, sensual seafood. You're left with clams, mussels, and scallops. Not a very good selection, is it? <laughs> oh, I'm going to go for scallops, number four. Scallops are sensual. Yeah, they're kind of fun. They just sit there in the hollandaise or the yeah. tartar sauce, whatever it is. Okay, let's hear from the audience right now. They came up with oysters, same as our champion, and he leads in the match, two points to one. Think about teenage boys for a moment. They do a lot of bragging, but what do they brag about? Is it fighting, bragging about their cars, drinking, or sex? Teenage boys. Most of you have had something to do with teenage boys at one point or another. Vivian? I don't know. The first thing that came to my mind with teenage boys was sex, number four. And you're going with your instincts, your intuition on that one. Dan? 
I was a teenager and uh, a boy too, so I got an edge there. But I really think that the teenage fellows like to get that 57 Chevy all duded up and brag about their cars. Are you that old? <laughs> At least. That's what you were talking about in your day, a 57 Chevy. All right. We have a vote for their cars and a vote for sex. And we want to know the thing teenage boys brag about the most. And the audience oh. said, oh. their car. Oh, oh boy. Wow. Three points for Dan. Hey, folks, you're looking for somebody new and different to date. Where's the best place to look? Is it at work, at church, in bars, or with friends? Vote on that. <laughs> somebody new and different that you'd like to date. Dan. That's a toughie. The church is pretty good, but I think I'd uh, go with friends. Alex? All right. Vivian? Oh. Best place to look for someone new and different to date. Uh, I think maybe they'd say at work. At work? So you're going to vote for number, number one. one. Dan almost went to church on that one, but he uh, settled on his friends. Let's see what uh, our friends in the audience had to say. They came up with bars. Oh. That would seem to be the logical place. No Tidy point group. for either one. Let's go on to this question. Tacky group. Is that what yeah, you What's the best way for a man to say he's sorry? Is he going to do it with flowers, with a poem, with champagne, or with lingerie? Go ahead, vote. <laughs> Obviously, he's going to be say, saying he's sorry to a woman. Vivian? Uh, number one, flowers. Flowers, that'll do it. Dan? It depends on how bad the crime was. <laughs> well, base it on Mine your Mine are usually very experience. bad. I'll, I'll, I'm going with champagne. Oh. Well, that signal means we're out of time, so this is the final answer. But uh, the way you prefaced that uh, answer of yours, Dan, I thought you might have gone for all three that were remaining. If your crime was so bad, go for everything. Let's see what the audience went for. The best way for a man to say he's sorry is with flowers. That's the point for Vivian, but we're out of time, and Dan has beaten you three points to two. Sorry, Vivian. Come on, Dan. Congratulations to you. You and I are going to take a short ride, Vivian. Pleasure having you here. We have a party here for you backstage. Thank you for joining us. We're going to back off and come back and play the pitfall round after these important words. Everybody wants to get into the act. Two people here who have a vested interest in how well our champion, Dan Wanamaker, does in this pitfall round. He's got close to $11,000 so far. And Dan, who are these young people? Lance Deidre. Lance and Deidre, do you want to go wait over there and we'll put your dad to work? See you later, guys. Some more prizes. Okay, this is the pitfall round. You know what happens. We take you upstairs on the uh, bridge and hopefully you can make it from one end to the other to oh. win more than $5,000. But first, we have your light show. We're going to dim the lights and the lights will flash at random. The three booby-trapped sections, the pitfalls will light up twice. The five safe sections will light up one time only. Are you ready? Never. Kids are. <laughs> Turn around, dim the lights, and... Here we go. There they are. You earn two pit passes during the match. Make your selection now and make it a good strategic one. Number two. And number, number five. five. All right, let's go up top and go to work. Why do I have this feeling, Dan, that those kids are going to remember their appearance on television for a long, long time? All right, you ready to go? Remember, every time you give me a correct answer, you'll move forward one section. You'll earn an additional $100 in cash. You've got two pitfall passes to help you through two booby-trapped sections. If you make it from where you're standing right now all the way down to this end in the 100 seconds we allow you, then you'll win this prize. Dan, you'll be driving off in a brand new two-door compact with four-speed standard transmission, front-wheel drive, reclining bucket seats, hatchback, and AM-FM radio. And Dan, the value of your prize is $5,055. Good luck to you. Oh, kids have got their fingers crossed. Here we go. 100 seconds on the clock. What hero's theme song is the William Tell Overture? William Tell. No, the Lone Ranger. Oh. In the movie Cool Hand Luke, Paul Newman ate 50 of them. 50 what? Pass. Hard-boiled eggs. If you are angling, what are you doing? Fishing. Fishing is right. You can move on to number one. 
That is safe. You've got $100. According to Omar Khayyam, what does the moving finger do? Pass. It writes. If you win the James Norris Trophy, what sport are you playing? Football. No, James Norris Trophy. Oh. Professional hockey, hockey defenseman. On the hit series Heart to Heart, who plays Mr. Hart? Bob Conrad? No, nope. Robert Wagner. Stephen King is one of the best-selling novelists in the world. What kind of books does he write? Mystery? No, horror, supernatural stuff. There's only one natural place in the world where penguins live. Where's that? North Pole. South Pole. In literature, what did the famous Scarlet Pimpernel do for a living? Pass. He was a spy. In Eggs Benedict, what goes directly under the eggs? Cheese? No, ham. In what children's book would you find Tweedledum and Tweedledee? Alice in Wonderland. We call it the hood of a car. In England, they call it what? Bonnet. The bonnet is right. You can move and you've got a pit pass for number two, so you go right across to number three. And you are safe there. In a racing car, your right foot is on the brake. What is your left foot on? The floor. The clutch. Before it can become a raisin, what does it have to be? Grape. Grape is right. You can move on to the next square, number four. That is a pitfall with four seconds left, so obviously you're going to run out of time, Dan. There's the time's up signal. Let's bring them back up. We're going to take a commercial break. We'll show everybody where the pitfalls were, and this just was not your day. Mercy. Let's take a walk down to the end. I'm warming up, though. Okay, here they go. Strange happens to our champion, Dan Wanamaker, whenever he plays the pitfall round and there's a car waiting at the end of the bridge, he blows it. And he did again this time, but he's wound up with a total of $11,217 in cash and prizes, and now he gets to face this challenger. Welcome a brand new challenger, an office worker from Merced, California, who's here to win a lot of money so she can go back to graduate school. Her name is Mary Whitey. Hello, Mary. Pleasure to have you on our show. Thank you. Watch out for him. He's yeah. good. Thank you. Good luck. Sure, he wishes them all good luck before he starts beating <laughs> yeah. on their head. Ready to go? Yeah. Okay, folks. A brief inquiry right now into relationships. That's how we're going to start this game off. Women who take the passive role in a courtship, a courtship, are what? Oppressed, smart, shy, or kidding? Give me a vote on that. <laughs> Women who take the passive role. Dan, go first. I think that's a smart lady. All right, Mary. What do you think? I think that they're probably just kidding the men along when they do that. Oh, the old strategy <laughs> routine, huh? Let's find out what the audience had to say. Women who take the passive role in a courtship are smart. <laughs> Dan gets his first point of the game. Jealousy, one of the seven deadly sins. All of us at one time or another, I suppose, are guilty of that sin. But for this question, we want to know what makes most wives <clears throat> jealous? Their husband's what? His work, his secretary, his friends, or his leisure, the way he spends his leisure time. Vote on that. Which one of those items is going to make the wife jealous? Mary? Probably his leisure time, I would think. All right, you uh, avoided secretary and friends. That's an yeah, interesting sure choice. <laughs> Dan? I don't, I don't want to avoid secretary because it uh, depends on the secretary. And I'll go with secretary. Okay. Dan has never avoided a secretary in his life. <laughs> never. And if his wife finds out about it, is he going to be in trouble? Let's see. Audience, what did you vote for on this one? You voted for leisure time. Way to go, Mary. That was kind of an off-the-wall answer, I thought, but uh, they obviously agreed with you. So that's great. You've got your first pit pass in the game. You have just heard a really juicy piece of gossip, folks, about a neighbor. What are you going to do? Are you going to ignore that piece of gossip? Are you going to cherish it, repeat it, or are you going to tell the neighbor? Vote on it. And now, Dan, tell me what this audience would do. A really juicy piece of gossip about a neighbor. Depends how truthful this audience is being. <laughs> Those little Deccans are all going to go out there and repeat it to somebody. Okay. I think they're all pretty good people. I think they're going to ignore it as hard as it is. Really? Yeah. Well, you know, if it's a juicy piece of I gossip, know, I know. Dan's point is well taken. Folks want to get out there and spread the good or the bad word. 
<laughs> Let's see what kind of an audience we do have. Are they a really nice crowd or are they gossips? They're a nice crowd. They're going to ignore it. All right. Dan applauded you, by the way, folks, even though he lost the point on that one to our challenger, Mary. If you had to post a road sign describing your job, what would that road sign say? Dead end, caution, speed up, or merge? We're talking about your job now. Not your sex life, not your relationships with friends, your job. Mary. I think everybody could probably speed up on their job a bit. Hmm. I could. All right. Don't tell my boss. I won't. Okay. Dan, your secret is safe with me, Mary. Okay. They look like they read a lot. And uh, <laughs> what you read tells you that if you don't change jobs every few years, you're probably looking at a dead end. I like the way you set up your answer. Let's find out from the audience what their preferred response was. Dead end. You got it right on the nose. Okay, Dan. You've decided to go for it. You're going to get married. What's the most important thing to look for in your partner? Intelligence, humor, honesty, or looks? A question that applies to both sexes, obviously. Voting on it. Everybody in our audience up there in that section. And now, Dan, you tell me. Most important thing to look for in the partner if you're going to get married. I applauded them for their... Uh... Whatever it was. I was wrong in that one anyway. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm looking for honesty. Honesty. Mary, are you married? Uh, not at the moment. Okay. Well, when you got married, when you were considering marrying, what did you look for? Oh, boy. I think, I think humor is really important. Is that People what you looked for the first time? I think so. Yeah. You did look As for I humor. As I remember. It was uh -huh. a long time. And it didn't work. Well, Why should it work actually, on no, this it show? <laughs> I don't know, Alex. <laughs> All right, we have one vote for humor, one vote for honesty, but the majority of the people in the audience went for honesty. That means Dan gets another point. And there's the time's up signal, and Dan, you've done it again. You've won a match, and you're going to play the pitfall round. Mary, sorry it didn't work out better for you. Thank you. It was that humor. I know it. Memories of the marriage that didn't work. We've got a party gift for you backstage. Right now, we've got to take a break, some important commercial messages, and then we'll come back with The Bridge and the Pitfalls. A few folks were not watching Pitfall last week when Dan made his first appearance on our program. We introduced him and mentioned that he was a hockey player. And you'll notice today in the first Pitfall round, he blew a question on professional hockey. He's obviously trying to protect his amateur standing. Let's see if he can change things around this time out. The bridge once again, eight sections, three of them booby-trapped. Gonna light them up at random now. The booby-trapped section is gonna light up twice, two times. Safe sections, all five of them, gonna light up one time only. You ready? Ready. Let's dim the lights, turn around, and here we go. <laughs> Strange. Oh, I see nothing. You saw nothing. You saw a lot of lights flashing. What's Cutting on that time. I'm going to the middle. Going to the middle. Three and Three four. And well, four. if it works for you this time, you're going to wind up with this prize. Dan, you'll receive a beautiful new bedroom suite with double dresser and mirror, five drawer chest, light tables, headboard, frame, and orthopedic mattress. Your new furniture will look great on 30 yards of luxurious deep pile nylon carpeting. And for your kitchen, this beautiful new three-door refrigerator freezer. Dan, your prize is worth $5,049. Five, zero, four, nine. Those are four important numbers, three other important numbers. One, zero, zero. Let's have 100 seconds showing on the clock. Good luck to you. Got those uh, pit passes in the right order? Right. Yes, sir. True or false? The dodo is a mythological bird. True. No false. It's just extinct. If you win the Vesna Trophy, what sport are you competing in? Hockey. Hockey. My gosh, you got it right this time. What is a bazooka? A very large nose or a rocket launcher? Rocket launcher. That's correct again. You can go to number two. And that one is safe. In boxing, you knock your opponent down. What kind of a corner must you go to? Neutral. Neutral is right. Yes, I get the pit pass for number three, the pit pass for number four, and you wind up on number five in oh. safety. As one of his characters, this comedian plays Karnak, the Magnificent. 
Who is he? Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson is the right answer. You go to number six and you are safe. If you are myopic, are you nearsighted or farsighted? Nearsighted. Nearsighted is correct. You go to number seven. And that's a pitfall, but you've got plenty of time. You've got 50 seconds. You're in very good shape. When you hit the bottom, I'll ask a question. You give me the right answer. We'll stop the clock and bring you back up. Okay, Dan. Yes or no? Do frogs have ribs? Yes. No. What's the correct name for the announcer at the circus? Masters. Uh, no, the ringmaster. Right. When Jack took Jill up the hill, he broke something. What? His crown. Crown. Stop the clock. Bring him up. 27 seconds. Two more correct answers is going to do it. You'll wind up with an additional $5,000 to add to the 11217 you have to this point. Keep stroking. If you have a bag of anthracite, what would you do with it? Burn it. Burn it. It's cold. That's right. You go on to number eight. Oh, another pit ball. You made a bad selection in your pit passes earlier on. We're down to 17 seconds. You can still make it. Listen carefully when you get to the bottom. Dan, if you have amnesia, what have you lost? Memory. Memory. Stop the clock. Bring them up. Nine seconds. Nine seconds in which to come up with one correct answer. For a $5,000 prize. Start the clock, as you know, when I begin the question. And I should mention that down there in the audience, your daughter is so excited at this moment, she can barely contain herself. She's got nothing on me. All right, you ready? What does an altimeter measure? Altitude. Altitude is the right answer. Hey! You get it for $5,049 to furnish for your home. Congratulations. All right, you did it beautifully. Got enough for it quickly enough to make up for having misselected one of the pit passes, mm. but you now have about $16,000, and you're going to come back on our next show to face another challenge. We'll see you next time out, folks, on Pitfall. Tonight, Larry Gatlin of the Gatlin Brothers tries to help a confused young runaway who is hiding aboard the love boat. Then, L.A.'s chief prosecutor is kidnapped by an underworld king in part one of a special two-part episode of Stingray. Global's got them both at nine tonight. Place near English Bay and Stanley Park.